Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, which you probably are because this is only my second video, my name is Liv. Thank you for joining us today. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be discussing the film Jojo Rabbit. I love this movie. Love it. I saw it like a week ago for the first time and I love it so much and we are going to discuss that film today. A note on spoilers, if you haven't seen the movie yet, feel free to stick around until I say spoiler alert. Stop watching, go see the movie, come back, return to my video, and keep watching the spoiler edition. So we're going to start off with no spoilers, and let's jump right in. So Jojo Rabbit is of course an Oscar winning film, came out in December of 2019. Um, it is directed and written by Taika Waititi. It won the Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay. The basic plot of the film is that it's about this little boy in Nazi Germany who is a Hitler youth whose imaginary best friend is Hitler. And he finds he's very dedicated to his country and to Hitler and the Third Reich. And he's like, yeah, he's very nationalist, very patriotic. But he discovers that his mother is actually hiding a little Jewish girl in their house which completely throws his whole world off, everything he thinks he's known. And it is a brilliant movie. I knew it was a comedy. I knew it had humorous elements to it when I went into it. I was not expecting it to be the deep, but funny, but important, dramatic movie that it ended up being. And I thought it was so good. I have never seen anything else by Taika Waititi, but I'm very interested to see his other movies because I think the way he did it was so good. His his style is very interesting, his sense of humor is very interesting, him as a person is very interesting, and I really want to see more of his work. He also played Hitler, the imaginary friend Hitler, in the movie, and he did a really great job. He was really funny and he was, he was just brilliant. So I would definitely love to see more of his movies because this movie was definitely super, super unique and I really enjoyed it. The cast had a really, really strong and talented and well-casted cast. The main character, Jojo Betzler, who's the little boy, is played by Roman Griffin Davis, who the first time I ever saw him was when I was watching the Oscars this year. He was in, being interviewed and he was very mature for his age and um, I really liked him. So I'm very curious to see where he goes because he was also very, very good in this movie. And he was surrounded by some incredible actors and actresses and he wasn't overshadowed by them at all. He definitely stood his ground and played the character really well and I can't imagine anyone else playing Jojo. So that was really great. Uh, his mother, who is Rosie Betzler, was played by Scarlett Johansson. This movie has made me fall in love with Scarlett Johansson. She is incredibly talented. She, just the way she embodied this character, who is her character, she's very motherly, but she's also very fun. And she has a great sense of humor. And there's this one scene where she's pretending to be Jojo's dad and pretends to have a conversation between her and the dad, but she's playing both sides. It's just amazing. I think she's phenomenal, the way she can play this character that is comedic and but also motherly and also has some very serious elements and go through some very serious plots in the movie and she just blew me away she is so talented i love her um the jewish girl in the movie whose name is elsa was played by thomason mckenzie who is a young actress from new zealand i believe and she was also very very good in this movie i really liked her character she was a, a person they didn't treat her just like this sad pitiful person. She, she was treated like an actual character. Um, she had a sense of humor. She was strong. She was funny. She was kind. Of course, she was scared because of what she was going through, which was horrible. And I think Thomas e. McKenzie did a really great job at playing this character and not going too over the top or too little with any parts of her personality. It was a really good balance. And I think she added a, re a lot to this movie. Some other cast members, Sam Rockwell, played Captain Klenzendorf. I, I really liked him as well. I really, really, really liked his character. So he's just in charge of all the Hitler youth at this camp thing that Jojo and his friends and his other Hitler youth buddies go on. He's kind of in charge of them all. And I really liked his character because he's not evil. He's not overpowering and strong. He's funny. He has a great sense of humor. He has a very human character and he's not a bad person. And I really liked Sam Rockwell's portrayal, kind of almost like he was drunk most of the time. It's kind of what it felt like, but that might just be Sam Rockwell 
but it was really, really good. And his kind of sidekick friend, um, Finkel, is played by Alfie Allen. And I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. I'm the biggest Game of Thrones fan. So Alfie Allen being in this movie made me very excited because Theon in Game of Thrones is just, I'm not gonna go there. But Alfie Allen did a great job. Finkel's kind of like the stupid friend, like, you know, that character, but I thought it was really great. And I really love the relationship between him and Sam Rockwell's character. And I'll also get that into that more later on. And then Rebel Wilson was also in it. And Rebel Wilson played Fraulein Rom, if I'm saying this correctly. But Rebel Wilson is very hit or miss for me because some things she's hilarious, like Pitch Perfect is one of my all time favorite movies. And I think she's hilarious in that movie. And then Cats, which I did see, she was not great. But in this movie, I think compared to some of the other um, cast members, she wasn't my favorite and her character wasn't my favorite, but she did have some really funny one-liners. And just her part kind of just being there, she was just kind of like off to the side, randomly making comedic jokes. And everyone was like, and she, but I really liked that and I think it was cool and I liked her in it. So yeah, she was really good. So those are all the main cast members. Um, Jojo Rabbit was actually based on a book called Caging Skies by Christine L Lunitz. I'll put it here. But anyways, it was based on a book. I have not read the book. Um, I think I'd like to read the book. I don't, I haven't heard much about it. Like some movies that are made from books, it's like, oh my God, it was a book. This movie, it's very much standalone, a movie that happened to be based on a book. So I do want to read the book just to see the comparison, like how strong it stuck to the book for it was like a loose adaptation of it or just kind of loosely based on it. So yeah, those are all the characters. Um, and I think all the characters were very strong. They all had very interesting personalities, different things to add to the story, different elements that are very unique because, you know, we've, we've seen the Holocaust in movies. We've seen World War II in movies. We've seen it all the time. So some of them can get very repetitive, but I think this one was a fresh twist on it and I really liked it. I really, really liked the combination of the humor and the seriousness because the humor, they didn't overdo the humor. They didn't take a very touchy, important, serious subject and just laugh about it. The jokes never crossed any lines. It was really great. And all the characters who were making these jokes it came from like a purpose, which I thought was great. And as the movie goes on, it does become more serious. There's more serious and sad elements um, go into it. But I think all in all, the combination between the two is great. And I think it was beautifully directed by Taika. So for all of you who haven't seen it yet, I highly, 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 highly recommend watching it. So go watch it right now. This movie is amazing. You will love it. I think it's so important too. It brings up so many themes like hope and family and friendship and and who we actually are on the inside and love and laughter and times of darkness and unity and all of these things and it does it in such a beautiful way that i think everyone would enjoy because it has things for everybody so all um, everyone who hasn't seen it go watch it now go play so for everyone left who has seen it we're on to the spoilery section of this movie so spoiler alert the end of this movie was very sad. The mom dying, the mom suddenly is hung and there's no build up to it. We don't realize what's happening. Obviously it's because someone found out that she was hiding a Jewish girl and that she was anti-Nazi. And I guess it was found out. And then the scene where Jojo, he's just walking down the street and he's walking through the, the town and he sees a butterfly and he's smiling at the butterfly and he follows it and it leads him to the hanging what's it called where the people are hung in the street so the later in the movie when he's following this butterfly it leads him to this place where they are hung and he sees his mother and that was heartbreaking and i did not see it coming and i like i said before love scarlett johansson and her character so i was so sad that she died um the way they showed it they never showed her face they only showed her shoes but throughout the movie they made her shoes a very prominent part of her character they would constantly be zooming in on her shoes and another big thing about the movie was that jojo could never tie his own shoes even though he was like 10 years old and his mother would always tie his shoes for him and try to teach him when jojo sees his mom there and we see her shoes her red shoes and one of them is untied and he tries to tie it for her but he can't and it's just so sad and it was done so beautifully 
and then he just goes home and back to Elsa and he's formed a really close relationship with Elsa, the Jewish girl. And I think the relationship is beautiful, especially after the mother's death, because originally she's mad at her because he blames her because his, her mom, his mom was hiding Elsa and that's why she died. But he doesn't get angry with her after a while and they just become friends because they're all each other have. Elsa's lover in France is dead. Her parents, she hasn't seen them in years. She has no family. Now that Jojo's only family member, his mother is dead, they only have each other. And I really liked that. So that was very sad, but I think it was handled beautifully. And the other thing that I really liked was the relationship between Sam Rockwell's character, Captain Glensendorf, and Alfie Allen's character, Finkel. Um, I kind of picked up on this while I was watching the movie. There's one scene between the two characters where it was very funny. Finkel was told to get some German shepherds, like the dog, to guard the guard dogs or something. And he brings back literal shepherds, like human shepherds that are German. And Sam Rockwell's like, well, I'm at the dog. And he kind of gets mad at him. And then Finkel gets all embarrassed and he feels so bad about himself and he feels stupid. And then Sam Rockwell's character is like, calming him down and he's like it's okay it's okay that's a stupid name for a dog like he's trying to make him feel better and there's this scene where their faces are really close to each other and they're kind of just like staring at each other but and i know i picked up on that when i was watching the movie and i was like gay i was like mm, i don't know if that's maybe that's what they meant by that i don't know and then later in the movie sam rockwell and alfie allen's characters had told Jojo that they were drawing these sketches of new costumes or like new army uniforms that have like these feathers and flowing capes and it's like colorful and it's extravagant. And then in the um, final battle of the movie, you see them wearing these like with their guns, but with their flowing capes and their hats with feathers and everything in it. And that was really great, but I never like picked up anything from that until I watched the behind the scenes video that and Sam Rockwell was talking about playing a gay Nazi and how that was um, when things have like opposite meanings, like jumbo shrimp, whatever, that playing a gay Nazi is not what you'd expect. And then I was like, he was gay. And I kind of picked up on it, but not entirely. But I think knowing that now and that's what they were going for, I really, really liked that element and the, the little things they subtly hinted at throughout the movie was really great. Um, obviously I didn't pick up on it, so it wasn't super obvious. I think it was just something little they threw in there, which was really great. Um, so if any of you have seen it and didn't know that, he was a gay Nazi. And I really, really liked it. And I really liked the relationship. Oh, also, the final scene of the movie is the Germans have lost, the allied powers have come in and they freed the city. And finally Elsa can leave. She doesn't have to be stuck in the walls of the house anymore. They leave the house and they walk outside and Elsa's standing there for the first time outside and no one's giving her a second look. No one's coming after her. No one's trying to kill her. And that's beautiful. And then they're both standing there and they're like, what should we do now? And before, previously in the movie, Elsa had said that the first thing she would do when she got free was dance. So the two of them start dancing together on the street and to the song Heroes by David Bowie, which is a really great movie song so good and i really liked that and it was a beautiful beautiful way to end the movie just showing this relationship between the two and ending it on a happy note was great also i really liked just the element of modern music within this movie there was a few i can't remember what songs they were but there's a few other times they were playing music oh they were playing i want to hold your hand by the beatles i believe so they had some like more modern music that obviously wasn't around in 1930s in the movie which i think was really cool i really liked that um, so yeah, all in all, I give this movie 5 out of 5. I think it was so good. I love this movie. Everyone should go watch it. Go watch it right now if you haven't, still haven't, but you're some, for some reason still here. Even though I spoiled things for you, go watch it because it is brilliant and I love it. And I think everyone will find something that they will enjoy in it. I mean, you can watch it with families because it's not it's not too, uh, too dark for younger people to handle. It has that um, humorous elements to it but also has some important messages and things you might want to talk about with younger kids or with anybody you want to watch it with. You can just discuss it because it is so, so good. Watch it. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I love Scarlett Johansson. I love her. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching my YouTube video again. Leave a like, subscribe, comment. If you want to discuss this movie or any other movies you want to discuss, let me know. 
and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you next time